Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Now, in today's special episode, we recently ventured to Regina, Saskatchewan for the 2024 Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association Conference. Though this episode may be shorter than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. So we'll be right back after a quick message with Cross Border Interviews featuring Mayor Dana Anderson from the village of Craven, Saskatchewan. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Dana, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> probably uh, from a deeply entrenched need to do the right thing all the time. Just from my parents, I guess, is ultimately <laughs> where that comes from. Um, and... Yeah, this it's this, the opportunity sort of, I don't want to say it fell in my lap, but kind of, um, because I, I actually wasn't born or raised in Craven. I was born and raised in Regina, um, but I've lived in Craven for 12 years. And during the time that I lived there, I felt like, you know, the, the existing council at the time maybe didn't seem to align to my values. We didn't feel... My husband and I didn't feel adequately represented by them, um, and I feel like a lot of people our age and like our demographic, you know, young parents, that sort of thing, just didn't feel represented. Um, and so there was there were a few things that we took issue with, and um, the the challenge was kind of put forward. You know, if if you think you can do a good job, then or a better job, run for council. And so I did, and here I am. Had you considered politics prior to not feeling represented? No. Really? <laughs> no. Did you follow what was going on in the municipality? Yeah, um, so I did I did kind of follow what was going on. There's always been um, in Craven, like a lot of, I'm sure you've probably heard it a million times, but infrastructure issues, especially to do with water. Um, and so we followed a lot of that, um, read a lot of the minutes, and um, I know there was one particularly contentious ratepayer meeting that I attended, um, which really was kind of that inspiration. That's where that challenge of, you know, if you think you can do a better job, please run for council. Um, and it was sort of there that more issues kind of came to light. We didn't really, I think there was myself and a great number of the community members didn't necessarily like how how things were being done, we'll say, um, and um, just, again, felt like we needed better, more diverse representation um, rather than sort of like one subsect of people. So, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. ran for counselor first or yes. dove right in and ran for no. mayor? <laughs> <laughs> no. So, it's it's kind of funny, actually. So, um, after the, the all-important, the, the contentious rate pair meeting, yep. we'll call it, um, it sort of turned into, it was still one, about a year until the next election. Um, so it was several beverages in garages and around bonfires, you know, and several the discussions. The true village way to have conversations. It's conversation. the village way. <laughs> it's the small town way. It just is. And um, so, you know, myself and, and several of the people I knew in town who thought, you know, something's got to change and nothing's going to change if nothing changes. Yeah. So we all kind of got together and said, hey, you know, I'll, I'll run for council if you will. <laughs> I'll, I'll run for council if you will. And we kind of, at, actually at one point, um, myself and our previous mayor, Scott Montgomery, uh, and our current councillor, Lindsay Kozak, the three of us all kind of got together. We said, hey, do you want to run a slate? And the three of us will run together and present ourselves together. Obviously, it would be voted individually, but 
if we can provide like a unified front and we we campaigned door to door with each other, we like handed out Brochures our material together, same, everything. Yeah. We did all of our stuff together and all three of us got elected. Um, and actually, out of that how was, many councillors, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, so we have four councillors and a mayor. So, okay. Yeah. So you were three out of the seven, out of the five. So, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of the part of the interesting factoids. But um, the previous council in 2020 was actually completely turned over. So there was not a single member of the previous council who was re-elected to the new council. And all of us had no experience <laughs> working in municipal government governance. So um, we relied very heavily on our CAO at the time to kind of guide us through. And it's been a huge learning experience, but it's been very interesting. So. I've, I'm, I would assume I'm going to paint a broad stroke here okay. because I do that a lot on this show. Okay, okay. You have come to the realization you're not pleasing 100% of the people in your community. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. You could give people $1,000 and someone will complain that it's in 20s. Like, absolutely. You heard it here first, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. So how do you make decisions that are in the best interest of the majority of people while understanding that you're never going to please 100% of the people? So I think um, I actually heard it in a session here um, at the SUMA convention today about how oftentimes the loudest group is not always the majority or not usually the majority. Um, and I found that in Craven too. Um, and in terms of ensuring that we're sort of making decisions that are representative of everyone, I would say our board right now is more diverse than it's been ever before in history. So um, our board, or sorry, our council. So um, right now there's a five of us total, three of us are women, which is incredible. We've not really majority. had- Majority. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> a majority women council. Um, I'm the first female mayor we've ever had, which is kind of exciting. And then um, the two gentlemen that we do have on our council also are like, um, we have Paul Winquist, he's a, he's a young parent also. Um, and then we also have Rick Taylor, who is, he's a retiree. So we kind of encapsulate all of the ages, sort of demographics. There's a few of us that have children, a few that don't. Um, so we feel like we're a little bit more diverse and we have a few different opinions that, that can be heard, whereas the previous, the previous council just wasn't just wasn't that that diverse at all. So I want to talk about Craven as a whole. Okay. And I want to preface this question as I always do. Okay. Because I always get emails. Okay. This is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is okay. not a motion of council, not a direction of council, okay. not even a policy of council. This is her <laughs> opinion. Yes. We'll get someone to still send an email. Of In your opinion, as of today, mm -hmm. what is the biggest challenge or challenges facing the village of Craven today? The biggest challenge, in my personal opinion, um, that I think is probably shared by, by several people, but my personal opinion um, is our lack of funds and a dire need for improvement of infrastructure. So that's a, that's a struggle, and I think it's, it's partly to do with... Um, with the fact that it's just not, it's not been something that's really been overhauled. You know, it's sort of been, there's been a lot of Band-Aid solutions. And um, so now we're coming to a point where there are a lot of critical things that need to get done. And, you know, a village only has so much money. We were fortunate enough to just recently get the ICIP grant. Okay. So we got that for um, some of our water in infrastructure. So um, we get to dig two new wells. The ones we have are past their service life. So um, this absolutely makes sense. Um, and then also provide a new water treatment facility because we are, like while we currently meet water standards, apparently in the future we will not. So, um, you so know. Is how thing. do you balance the growth and the infrastructure deficits mm -hmm. with the people who are there in your community today? Mm -hmm. Because unless you get grants for everything, yeah. guess what? Yeah. I'm not going to burst your bubble, but I'm mm -hmm. going to, you're going to have to raise taxes. You're yeah. going to have to cut service levels to pay mm -hmm. for things. How do you balance the needs of the community against the needs of the future community? Yeah. Um, it's difficultly. What? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, it's a it's a, a sort of a ridiculous balancing act is what it feels like. Um, no, it's 
the best we can. <laughs> Honestly, the best we can. Do you think people kind of understand kind of, that? Um, Do you think the average resident, because I have noticed yeah. an apathy when it comes to municipal governance mm -hmm. in this co country. People will know who their counselors are, but truly they probably don't know what yeah. what's in the minutes or what's even on the agenda. Totally. Do yeah. people understand the challenges your community faces, do you believe? Um, yes and no. Um, I think there are some, there, there is clearly lots of misinformation out there um, and lots of people who think they know what's going on, um, but don't actually. Keyboard um, warriors, keyboard warriors. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, yes. Um, so, you know, um, and we've, we've experienced that, you know, people showing up for meetings where they think something huge just happened and it, you know, it wasn't anything or, you know, those sorts of things. And, um, so yeah. So I want to flip the uh, script a little bit here for a second. Yeah, sure. So we talked about challenges. Yes. Which are infrastructure challenges, which is yes. understandable. Yes. What's the thing you're proud about though? Because every municipality has their challenges, yeah. but only your municipality has that one accomplishment that you look mm -hmm. at and you say, you know what, we're doing this right. What is that for? Um, oh, man. Um, or successes. Yeah, I think overall, I mean, of course, you're always going to have the people who intentionally misunderstand or the misinformation, right? That sort of thing. Um, but in general, I am really proud of the fact that our council has um, been ultra transparent as much as we can. We've reestablished our Facebook page and kind of updated our website and everything. So basically any information a resident could want to know, they can find it on social media. Um, we notify in advance about our agendas so that people can actually, you know, it's not like we're posting minutes three months later so that people can... Right? That may or may not have been happening previously. So it's oh, kind of Oh, at least you post nice. it. I spoke to a mayor recently, a small town mayor, and, he, and uh, after the conversation, he said, yeah, the, the former mayor mm. didn't even post the agenda or the minutes oh, on dear. the website. It oh, was just dear. in a filing cabinet somewhere. Mm. Yeah, that's a bit problematic. Um, but yeah, it's I, I'm really proud of the job that we've done in being really transparent, as transparent as, as possible. Um, when people ask us questions, we're happy to answer them and just kind of working hard to, to fix the problems. And it feels like a lot of that. It feels like a lot of all the time sort of cleaning up messes as it were. But yeah. It's... So final question, a million dollar, because okay. you have other things you need to get back to in the, the sure. breakout <laughs> session start here soon. <laughs> sure. But in your opinion, mm -hmm. what makes Craven such a unique place to live, mm. to work, and to raise a family? Mm, okay. Well, the thing I think that makes Craven unique, and especially for living in and raising a family, um, because it's just such a small, close-knit community, that's the thing I think I like best. Like, as a person who grew up in Regina, and my husband grew up in Regina also, um, both of us have clearly stated we'll never move back here um our parents live here we love regina it's great it's not for Mayor us masters it's a beautiful community i got a selfie with her the other day she's fabulous your city is great but um but yeah we're not coming back here <laughs> um and it's just the small town feel you know to know um you can like let, let your kids outside and you know you don't really have to worry as much and and our community I think the average age is 40 which is younger than it's been in a great number of years so you know there's a lot of small families that are kind of moving into our community and and that sort of a thing so um yeah I I really think the the small town feel you know lots of young families um kind of moving in is is definitely what kind of makes us that sort of like homey cozy little place to be Thank you so much for this. It's been yeah, an honor. Yeah, thanks for having me. We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA convention in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. 
every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.